Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I'd like to share my method for mixing watercolors on the paper and on a palette, as well as building up layers of color to achieve a certain look on a finished image. I'm going to be stamping with this beautiful stamp set called Beauty and Song from Picket Fence Studios, and I'll be coloring with Gonzai Tombi watercolors. Because these are dry in their state, I'm adding a spritz of water onto all of the little individual pans of watercolor. And I'm stamping the image onto a piece of watercolor paper with some light brown dye ink. Using dye ink will allow for the, the light brown ink to mix in with the other mediums that I'm adding and so it will help to lighten it up. The first way that I like to work in layers is to add a custom color, whether it's directly from the palette or you mix it yourself, but add a custom color down to a certain section, knowing you're going to have that be your highlight and you will come back with some deeper shades to build the contours. Another way is, as you can see, I've just added some yellow paint directly onto the flower petals and now I'm adding pink into the same area while the yellow is still wet. That means that both of these colors are going to have the opportunity to mix together while they are right here on the paper. Sorry for my clock. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to go back and fill in some of the areas with some darker colors. Also, another tip is I like to make sure that I leave some space in between the items I'm coloring, otherwise the images will bleed together. If you have five petals of flower, just do the alternating petals and that way you'll be able to come back, let that dry, go to another section of your image and finish it. It really does make a difference. For example, I couldn't have done this tiny little petal while doing the other petals because it was going to bleed from one area to the next. This will help you get some definition to your work. So the pinks and the yellows are mixing together on the paper and now the tan and the burnt orange color is mixing together on the breast of the bird. Back to the yellow and pink, as you can see here, just by adding a little bit more water, I'm giving that pink and yellow paint enough of a chance to mix together. And I skipped the petal that's to the left because I want to give the petal in the center some time to dry. I'm going to work in layers again on the feet of the bird. First, I added a blue color and then a pink color, and then I mixed together something that looks almost like a gray. I have run out of water in my water brush. That's the danger of using a water brush. However, I am using quite a bit of water in this particular project, so it's good to make sure you have a, some kind of a source to where you can just squirt some more water into the barrel. Working on the body of the bird and not the wings, as you can see, I'm kind of going from one area to another area, the, the areas that do not touch one another. I'll add some color and then come back with clean water to kind of wick away some of the color that's already there. For example, if you look at the area close to the bird's eye, it's much more light than it is around the contour of the head. So the initial application of the ink or the watercolor is going to be heavier than just dry your brush and then come back and take that drier brush and it'll help to wick away and spread out some of the color that's already sitting on the paper. That's probably one of the very first things that I learned working with watercolors 
is not to keep bringing additional color onto the image, but instead to take the color, apply it to the paper, then dab my brush off and work with the color that is already on the paper. Spread it and move it around, then add more if I need to. I'm adding a background to this image and I've mixed together two colors. One is a teal and one is a very light purple. I mixed them together on my dish and I did zoom in on more of the coloring section, but I left it zoomed out so you can see just how worked over my little saucer is getting. I'm mixing colors, but I, ha I did not I wasn't mindful enough to make sure that the colors didn't touch each other. So I lost a lot of my blue color, but I got enough of it. It's okay. So here's another way to give your image layers and definition. And I almost always do this now on my coloring is first I watercolor and then I almost always come back with colored pencils and also fine line details. So first I use a white colored pencil and add some highlights where they may need to be where I wasn't able to get on the watercoloring. Then I use a black fine line permanent pen. This one is um, a 0.5 I believe. And I'm just adding some areas that look like they needed to have just a little bit more definition and then I almost always use a white gel pen right next to those areas that I draw with the black pen because it helps to kind of bring the image more to life. So instead of just cutting out a typical circle or, or trimming down my panel, I had the idea that I was going to go a little funky with it and do a partial die cut. So you can see where the panel looks like it's been cut away here. And I was able to make this happen by placing the top plate of my die cut machine to where it would not cut away that bottom right hand corner. So it kind of laid off of the image on the left hand side and made sure that it was just not underneath the cutting plate. I have some videos on partial die cut if you're interested in that particular technique. So I've added the sentiment with versifying Claire Onyx or no uh, Nocturne ink. Uh, that's a new one for me that I'm very much liking. And then I'm going to finish the project off with some melted icicle sequins from Trinity Stamps. And I'm using the Marvy Jewel Picker and Gina K Connect Glue to apply them down to the project. I hope you have enjoyed watching the coloring for this beautiful little bird. And as spring is coming, we'll probably see more birds um, around. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would very much appreciate subscribing and ringing the bell. I'll see you next time.